This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. An Oracle object defines both a data structure, like a table or a view, and a code object, like a package. The structure is defined in an object specification. What I have on the screen is a very simple object. You can see it looks sort of like a table declaration. Code headers, if there are any, are defined in the specification, and then the actual code lives in the object body, just like a package spec in a package body. So with this simple example, I'm creating an employee's T object. The syntax is create a replace type, the name of the type, as object, and then the attributes and method specifications. So I'll go ahead and compile this. And this is a fully useful object at this point. I can use it in a data structure, for example, a table, a schema object, if I wanted to. I could create a table called employees tab with one column of the employees T type, which is made up of multiple attributes. Tables employees tab created. You won't really see that a whole lot in Oracle, mainly because Oracle is much more powerful as a relational database. You have the ability to store objects if you want to, but really you just don't see it a lot in schema objects. Where you will see it is in code objects. So let me go ahead and drop this table using the same syntax, drop table, table name. Got rid of it. In code, you'll see it used like this. So you declare a variable of the type employees T. Then in the code, I create a new instance of the object using the object constructor. So the object constructor takes the values and creates a new instance. And that just means memory is allocated and variables are potentially assigned, Oracle automatically generates a default constructor that contains all of the attributes. And then finally, I do a DBMS output of first name and last name. I can go ahead and run this. You see Lewis space Cunningham, as I expected. Since Oracle automatically creates the default constructor, I don't need to worry about that. I do want an empty constructor, though. This will just return an empty instance where none of the attributes are populated. So what I do for that is, I update the specification and I create my own constructor. You have to call it the same name as your object. It's not going to take any parameters. It's going to return itself, which is just an instance of the object, as the result. So I compile this and that compiles. And to implement the constructor, I create a type body. So it's create or replace type body the type name as your code, and then you have to end with the end. So it's a block, just like any other. In this case, my employee's T constructor, again, takes no parameters, return itself as the result, and just has the return. My employees are the type body compiled. So if I wanted to use this, it looks much like the other case, but I'm creating an instance that's empty, then I'm manually assigning the values, and then I'm doing my output. You can see the manual assignment looks a lot like when you're assigning elements of a record. You assign the values. Here's my empty constructor. It took no parameters. And we can go ahead and run this. You see Lewis Cunningham. Just as easily as an empty, I can create one that will take first name and last name and leave salary and commission empty. The syntax is the same but I'm including the parameters first name and last name. And again, they have to match the attributes in the constructor. To return self as a result, I go ahead and compile that. I'll add the new piece to the body. And I'm just taking the variable first name and assigning it to this instance attribute first name and the same with the last name. So I compile that. In this case, I'm going to use my constructor to assign Lewis Cunningham at the creation time and then manually do salary and commission. And then I can run it and same output. Now I'm going to create one more method in this object. In addition to constructors, you can create procedures and functions to do things just like you would in a package. Usually that means it's going to work on the instance of the object. You know, it's a procedure specific for the instance or function specific for the instance. You can also do methods that are used for comparing to other object types. So what I'll do is I'll create a procedure inside my object called print values that will just do my display for me. 
in my runtime, I don't want to have to put dbms output every time. I want to make it simple to see what the values are. So I have member procedure print values. That's what I added new to this. Very simply, no parameters. It's going to display everything for me. That compiles. Then I add my body. And this is just as simple. The only thing I've added is this member procedure print values. And it's just a dbms output. It's going to do self dot first name space self dot last name comma salary equals the value so it's just taking the attributes that have been defined in this instance of the object and doing a display on it that compiled then if i wanted to see my output so i'm using the same definition but instead of doing a dbms output i'm doing my print values and what I would expect to see is Lewis space Cunningham, comma, salary equals 10,000. And let's see if that's what I get. That is what I get. Lewis Cunningham's, comma, salary equals 10,000. So that covers objects in a nutshell. Now there's one aspect of objects that greatly adds to its usefulness, and that's the ability to create a collection of objects. You're basically just creating an array of those object types. The syntax for that is create a replace type. You give it a name, and we're going to say it's a table of the other type. In this case, we're creating employees A. It's going to be a table of employees T. My type employees A compiled. So now I can have a collection or an array of employees T. And I'll show you how that works. So what I'm going to do is I have my new object variable, and it's of A, which means it's the array type of employees A. I'm initializing my collection using the default constructor, and because it's a table, it's an empty constructor. My first instance, I'm using the extend syntax to create a new element in my collection. And the first element is of employees T using the full constructor. The second element is using the full constructor Joe Smith 10,050. Then I'm going to loop through and call my print values procedure to actually do the output. Clear this. So you can see the first element was Lewis Cunningham, salary is 10,000. The second element was Joe Smith, salary is 10,000. So that worked. So this is the way you can use collections to store off many instances of an object and then loop through and do some action on them. Where this really becomes powerful is you can actually use this against a table. If you remember back when we were talking about SQL, we talked about some bulk operations where you could bulk collect into. So you would actually populate a collection using data from the table. We can do the same thing with a object type using the collection type. So we declare our array variable of employees A. We call our constructor for the values in the table. These are actually columns in the table. Bulk collect into our variable from employees. Then I'm going to loop through and display the outputs. I'm going to select all the employees in my employees table and put them in an array of employees T. Then I'm just going to do print values on each row as I loop through it. And this is the output. Mary Smith, her salary. Hager Shershot, his salary. Justin Wilson, his salary. And Joe Smith, two and three. This is very useful and very powerful in a lot of different circumstances, and this is the way that you'll usually see object types being used. And that's it for the overview of object types. It's a pretty deep subject, but that should give you a good preview. Talk about objects in quite a bit of detail in my PL SQL course.